This is part 120 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss encryption and decryption with an example. We'll discuss how to encrypt and decrypt route values. The same techniques can be applied to encrypt and decrypt query string parameters, database connection strings, and any other application sensitive data. It is the Data Protection API, DP API in short, that we'll be using for all our encryption needs. Let's understand encrypting route values with an example. To view a specific employee details, we click the view button and notice the URL right here. We are redirected to slash home slash details slash two. The integer value two at the end is the ID of the employee. At the moment, the employee ID is readable. We want to encrypt it so it's not readable. The first thing that we're going to do is create a class that's going to hold purpose strings required for encryption and decryption. We'll discuss what purpose strings are in detail in just a bit. But before that, let's add that class to this security folder. Let's name that class data protection purpose strings. For now, this class is going to contain just one purpose string. It's a public read-only string property and we named the property employee ID route value and the purpose string is also employee ID route value. In a bit we'll see how we are going to make use of this purpose string. We need to do one more important thing and that is register this class that contains our purpose string with the dependency injection container in ASP.NET Core. This allows us to inject an instance of this class into any controller throughout our ASP.NET Core application. And you know the drill. We do the registration with the DI container in configure services method of the startup class. Let's crawl all the way to the end. We want a single instance of the class throughout our ASP.NET Core application. So let's use add singleton method and the name of our class is data protection purpose strings. Take a look at this framework data protector token provider class. If you recollect from part 117 of this video series, it is this class that generates email confirmation token, password reset token, etc. This class is also responsible for encrypting and decrypting these tokens. Now, if we scroll down a bit, notice here we have a property called protector of type iDataProtector. This interface has got two useful methods, protect and unprotect, which we use to encrypt and decrypt data respectively. If we scroll down a bit more, notice we have the generate async method here, which actually generates tokens and the generated token is passed to the protect method of iDataProtector, so the token can be encrypted. And if we scroll down a bit more, we have validate async method and here we're using unprotect method of iDataProtector to decrypt the token. We want to use this built-in iDataProtector to encrypt and decrypt employee ID route values. We need an instance of iDataProtector within our home controller. So let's create a private read-only field of type iDataProtector. We don't have the required namespace. So let's bring in the namespace first and then let's call the variable protector. Next, we need to understand how to get an instance of the class that implements iDataProtector. Let's see how the built-in DataProtector token provider class does that. Notice, to get an instance of iDataProtector, we're using data protection provider and this variable is of type iDataProtectionProvider. This interface is injected into the class using the constructor. And then on this interface, we've got create protector method. And to this method, they're passing the purpose string. They're using here the name of the data protector token provider to use as the purpose string. In our case, we have a separate class that contains our purpose string. So in addition to injecting this interface, I data protection provider, we also need to inject our class that contains our purpose string. Let's first inject I data protection provider into our home controller. Instead of typing it by hand in the interest of time, let's copy it from here and paste it. In addition to this, 
we also need to inject our purpose string class. Let's copy it and paste it right here. Next, we need an instance of iDataProtector. Let's do that within the constructor here. This interface, iDataProtectionProvider, has createProtector method. So let's use it to create the protector. And to this method, we need to pass the purpose string. Remember, this class contains our purpose strings. So let's pass this instance. At this point, we have an instance of iDataProtector and we can use its protect and unprotect methods to encrypt and decrypt employee ID route values. But before we do that, let's understand why we need to pass a purpose string to create protector method. We want to encrypt route values, so we need an instance of iDataProtector. So we call createProtector method and pass it a purpose string as parameter. You can think of this purpose string as an encryption key. This key is then combined with the master or root key and using these two combination of keys the data is encrypted. This encrypted data can only be decrypted by this same combination of the two keys that is the purpose string and the master key. Now let's say we need another instance of iDataProtector this time to encrypt and decrypt query string parameters. So we again call create protector and pass the purpose string query strings. Now this purpose string will be again joined with the master key to encrypt the data. So the point that I'm trying to make is the data that is encrypted by one combination of keys can only be decrypted by that same combination. In other words, the data that is encrypted by iDataProtector1 cannot be decrypted by iDataProtector2 and vice versa because the combination of the keys is different. The purpose string is inherent to the security of the data protection system as it provides isolation between cryptographic consumers even though the master or root key is the same. We want to encrypt the employee ID value. If we take a look at the employee model, notice at the moment we only have an integer property which holds the plain text value. We need another string property here to hold the encrypted ID. The value for this property comes from the ID property. We simply encrypt the value we have in the ID property and store it in this encrypted ID property, meaning we do not want this property to be mapped to any column in the underlying employees database table. So to specify that, let's decorate it with not mapped attribute. This attribute is in a different namespace, so let's bring that in. Next, in the home controller, in the index action, we retrieve the list of all employees. In the employee model object, we now have encrypted ID property and we need to populate that. So for that, let's use the link select statement. We are going to write a couple of lines of code here. So let's include a pair of curly braces, format it a bit and we want to populate the encrypted ID. So we want to take the plain text ID value convert that to a string and then to encrypt this plain text ID value we are going to use the protector we have created in the constructor. So this protector has got protect method and we are going to use it to encrypt the ID value. Once we have the encrypted ID property populated let's return the employee object and then pass the model to the view. Now let's take a look at the view. View action link is right here. Notice at the moment the route parameter id is bound to the plain text id property on the employee model object. Instead, let's bind it to the encrypted id property and then run our project and see what we've got so far. We are on the home page. Let's click view. Notice in the URL the employee id value is now encrypted. At the moment we have a runtime exception because the details action within our home controller does not know how to decrypt the employee ID. Let's do that now. At the moment, the ID parameter on the details section is of type integer, but we know the encrypted ID is of type string. So let's first change the data type and then we need to decrypt 
the ID. For that, let's create a variable. Call it decrypted ID. To decrypt, use the protector unprotect method and then pass it the encrypted ID. This get employee method expects the ID value to be passed as an integer. So we want to convert this decrypted ID to an integer. But we are not using this variable anywhere else in this method. So what I'm going to do is convert the data type here to integer and simply call this variable employee ID. And we know this unprotect method will decrypt the ID and return that as a string. So let's use the convert dot two in 32 method to convert the decrypted ID to an integer. All that is left is to pass this employee ID to the get employee method here and to the view here. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now we don't have the runtime exception anymore and the employee ID in the URL is encrypted. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.